Okay, good morning, everybody. It's Monday. Welcome back to another uh, uh, installment, another session of Monday Morning Mojo. I want to thank all of you who are joining me here on Zoom this morning. If you're with me on Zoom, just going to ask you to go ahead and mute your uh, microphone. And uh, it's exciting to be here with you this morning. So we have a lot of you watching on our Facebook group. Good morning, good morning. And again, it's Monday, so it's Monday Morning Mojo. This is Anna Gibbs, and I just wanna thank you for joining me and welcome you here to a really exciting morning for me because I am going to be uh, teaching or sharing some of the content that I included in my chapter, Will the Real You Please Stand Up, which is going to be featured and published in Jack Canfield's next book, The Keys to Authenticity. The book should be dropping later this week. So it is um, really an exciting time because being an author has always been a goal for me. And so I just wanna thank you all for being here this morning because we're gonna talk about you and we're gonna talk about uh, what it means to be authentic. So. Maybe you want to grab some paper and pen and take some notes, but um, I want to jump right in this morning. And, um, you know, I think that authenticity is something that we all, if we were to think about it, we would all agree that we work hard every day or that we strive every day to be our true authentic self. And yet in this world, it is a challenge sometimes. And so I think that uh, our perception of reality can, can oftentimes be distorted. So um, I was really excited when this opportunity came up for me. And um, I've been following Jack Canfield for a long time. If you're not familiar with Jack, uh, certainly do some research, but he is, um, he's probably most famous. Um, and it's hard to even say that because he's done so much in his career, but he's probably most famous for being the co-author or co-contributor uh, of the chicken soup uh, for the Soul series, and there's been, you know, thousands of, of of those books published over the years in different versions of Chicken Soup for the Soul. How many of you remember that? You can drop it in the comments if you if you remember or if you've ever read Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, but Jack is an entrepreneur. He's gone on to be an inspiration to so many people. I think one of his gifts is definitely to be uh, an encourager of thinking bigger. He is definitely someone who teaches a lot about manifestation. And I came across Jack Canfield probably early in, in my personal journey on personal development. It was probably close to 20 years ago, maybe even, even before that, 20, 24 years ago. And um, Jack is featured in the book, The Secret, and has gone on to speak across the, the globe and, and really you know, lead people into, I think, a self-discovery journey of self-actualization and success. And uh, he also wrote uh, the, the international bestseller, The Success Principles. Um, so a lot of amazing work that Jack has done. So I've been following him for many years. I've been a part of his you know, community online and taken a lot of his workshops. And so when this opportunity presented itself last year to be a contributing author in, in this collaborative book that he was putting together, I jumped on it. And you know, I have to be honest, in true transparency, I hesitated and uh, thought about it for a couple of weeks and, and went through a lot of the same thoughts that we all struggle with. Like, well, who am I to write something in, in a book, you know, with Jack Canfield, do I, uh, you know, have enough experience? What could I possibly say? Does anybody want to read or hear what I have to say? And and went through a lot of those, you know, limiting thoughts and self doubts. And I'm proud to say, I pushed through it and started to basically drink the water I'm selling to you all the time about belief and about you know, realizing what your gifts are and, and, and working towards, towards achieving them. And so I threw my hat in the ring, I submitted um, a sample and, and then I, I was, you know, chosen to be a part of this project. And uh, I worked with a writing coach for a little bit, but it's just, it's exciting for me to be able to say that I followed through on it, right? Can any of you relate to that? So when I found out about the, the topic of the book, 
right? Authenticity. I was excited about that because I think that that's what we're all striving for, whether we realize it or not. And I think that we probably don't talk about this enough. Although when we see anything or someone that is being inauthentic, we know it right away, don't we? And so I believe that, you know, the keys to authenticity begin with self-actualization. The keys to authenticity really begin with self-actualization. And I don't think there's ever been a time in history where this is going to become even more important. I believe our world is just crying out for, for realism. I think our world is crying out for authenticity. Um, Greg Rochelle is another thought leader that I follow. He talks a lot about leadership. And he says that people want to follow a leader who is real rather than a leader who is always right. Because, you know, being authentic is, is about being who you were born to be. And yes, we have the ability to grow. We have the ability to develop. We have the ability to uh, learn new skills. And the person that I am today is not the person I was 20 or 30 years ago. I'd like to believe that I've improved or I've gotten better in so many ways. Yet the root of that is, is standing firm in my natural gifts and standing firm in the natural abilities that we have. And I think that that step one is for us to understand more about who we are and who we're not and really being able to accept all of that and knowing that it's not about perfection. Authenticity is not about perfection. It's about being real. And it's about really allowing ourselves to step into the full version of who we are. Because when we first accept who we are, then we can grow and develop into something, you know, even, even greater, greater, greater versions of ourselves. And, you know, I said in the beginning when I opened up that our perception of reality, right, the distinction, the distinction between real and fake can sometimes be hard to understand, right? Because we live in this world where we're encouraged to have filters and enhancements and props and we spend our day on social media and, and that's a place that we can really connect and that's a place where we can learn a lot and be inspired. And it's also a place where comparison and feelings of inadequacy can show up, uh, especially when our feeds are full of photos and reels of perfect homes, beautiful people, uh, glamor, uh, well-behaved kids, uh, gorgeous homes, right? And all those things around success and what it should look like. And all of those things are exciting and inspiring. Yet, if we allow all of that to just shape our own image and our definitions of self, rather than connecting with who we really are, we really can't connect with our authenticity. So if, if I'm making sense to you, I would love to, you know, throw your comments out there in the chat. Uh, let me know how you're feeling about it. Um, so I think, again, most of us would consider ourselves to be pretty authentic, right? We, we want to believe that we're in alignment with our true selves, yet are we? Are we really okay with all of it? The messy, the beautiful, can we accept all the things that make us who we really are? Are we okay with letting others see our truth? when we speak up and share our thoughts? Like in your work environment, are you the person who's willing to say, I'm not sure if I understand, or I'm not sure if I agree, or I have an idea, right? Are we courageous enough to stand in our truth and be willing to share our thoughts and our creativity? Do we ask ourselves the powerful questions that matter most to us? Or do we stay silent sometimes, not wanting to stand out too much, or we work too hard to fit in and blend in so that we can feel accepted and safe rather than feeling confident that we can show up and stand out in our own true self, in our own power, in our own creative messiness, um, and, and know that we can attract the right people and opportunities to ourselves when we do. So authenticity means standing in your truth. And again, finding the courage to pursue your dreams and your goals with no apologies. It's, it's not living your life according to someone else's rules or someone else's design. 
or someone else's definitions of success, prosperity. It's about not comparing ourselves to everything else and everyone else around us. Yeah, again, we can use that as opportunity to be inspired and encouraged so that we can break through to our own next ceiling or break through that ceiling of achievement. But it's, a, it's about not feeling like we have to measure up. It's about feeling like we can show the world who we really are, right? And so I, I felt like this was so important because I think a lot of time is wasted trying to fit in and be what everyone else expects you to be rather than discovering more about yourself and who you are and how to use your natural skills and abilities and strengths and humor and wisdom and everything else that, that comes in that messy ball of you and just show the world who you are. You know, life is full of enough challenges and adversity. Um, so we have enough to figure out. We have enough to navigate without adding ourselves to the list. So I think there's so much power in authenticity because my loves, it's your truth. It's your identity and it's your opportunity to show the world who you are. And it it's easier. It's so much easier when you can ease in and be you because, you know, Trying to fit in and be someone that you think you need to be can be very exhausting. So why do we have a tendency to make things harder than they need to be? I think accepting ourselves for who we are, the good, the bad, and everything in between is the first step to living an authentic and powerful life. There's no one like you. There's no one like you at all, and there never will be because you have unique gifts and talents. And even if those gifts or talents appear to be the same, uh, when you look around, you know, the, the office or you look around, you know, your own industry, they're not. They're individual and unique to you because no two people are alike. And that's what makes this world such a great place. Who would want to be a cookie cutter image of someone else? So authenticity matters now more than ever. The world needs you to be who you were meant to be. But the question is, who do you think you are? And I mean that in a positive way, right? Who do you think you are? If we could sit down and answer that question, if we could get comfortable with self-expression, if we could really embrace all those unique talents and gifts and insights and values that make up this personal combination of, of, of you, right? And, and really unlock all the gifts that we have to give we could start to reach our full potential if there ever is such a thing as reaching your full potential. Because I think as we grow and we strive for, for our full potential, we increase our capacity for more. So I think the journey of life is to always push the boundaries of our potential, right? So that we can achieve more and more. And that is not about you know, material accomplishments or just doing more. It's about growing more. It's about understanding that you can grow into the fullest version of yourself. But you have to start with a few questions, right? About who do you think you are? About allowing your true self to stand up. So being your most authentic self is the opportunity to stand in your own true power. And when you do, that's going to inspire other people to do the same. Imagine how exciting life could be if we could all learn how to appreciate just how special we are and how special each other are. And if we could stop wasting time trying to be something or someone else, if we could stop trying to judge other people or question what other people uh, do or how they do it or how they express themselves, right? If we could allow space for all of us to really be creative and, and use our gifts to make the world a better place, we could see such positive change. You know, life is just too short for all this crap. <laughs> it's just too short for all this BS, right? And when you avoid the truth of who you are, it's the fastest way to sell yourself out. When you avoid really identifying with who you are and embracing who you are, you just sell yourself short and it will put a big gap between you and the amazing things the universe has in store for you. 
you know, when we were little kids, we were okay with being ourselves. We didn't worry about the world judging us. We didn't worry about all the things that as adults, we start to, to second guess. We were more comfortable in our own skin and we didn't fear the judgment. But then I, I don't know, at some point, you know, as we started to grow up or become an adolescent, we started to pay more attention to what other people thought, right? It, it was until one day that someone or something made us question ourselves and eventually our own potential. And somehow we were made to think that it was not okay or enough to be silly, smart, capable, quirky, sensitive, compassionate, competitive, or whatever else makes you who you are. And so I think for many of us, it's still happening today. Whether we want to admit it or not, we might think we are living an authentic life, but yet we find ourselves shifting into what other people expect of us rather than living according to our own set of values. Our values are the rules we live by. Our values are, are framing our belief system. So are you really clear about your own set of values or are you trying to live according to someone else's? Now, I'm sure somebody's thinking, well, why do we do that, right? Is that really, you know, what I'm doing or is that really what happens with a lot of people? Why do we do this? Well, I think it's because sometimes it's a little scary or risky to really be ourselves. We have to be okay with letting the world see us for who we truly are. We have to be okay. We have to be comfortable with being vulnerable. We have to realize and accept that we might not be everybody's cup of tea and it's okay. It's okay. I struggled with that for so many years and I finally realized, you know, the, the harder I tried to show up in a meeting the way someone expected me to, or to uh, frame it in such a way that was acceptable or to, uh, make sure that people didn't know I never graduated college, you know, whatever, whatever those thoughts were that sometimes show up, um, it just, it created more stress and I became more, more inauthentic in the process. Instead of just embracing who I am and embracing my own intelligence, my own creativity, my own ability to inspire other people to take action, my leadership quality, my compassion, uh, my my heart, right, showing up, whatever, whatever it is, all those things that are true about you too. You know, instead of embracing that, I, I worked so hard to try to push stuff down and pull other stuff forward. And I didn't even know who I was sometimes. And so I had to learn that when I let all that go and let who I am really shine and come through, I'm going to attract the right people to my world. I'm going to attract the right opportunities right? When I'm more self-aware, when I understand my limitations and I don't apologize for them, when I embrace my strengths and I use them more rather than trying to always leverage my weaknesses, I was a better service and value to my team, to my clients, to my peers, to my family. So being self-aware is really a, an important step for you to be able to connect to your authentic self. And so if, if you are struggling with a few things, then you might be living outside of your authentic self. So I wanna share a couple of those uh, thoughts with you here this morning, right? Because I think being self-aware in this area uh, is, is really important. And so if you're living outside of your authentic self, then you're probably doing any or all of the following, right? You're probably someone who is always willing to go with the flow for the sake of acceptance. You're someone who's not comfortable voicing their thoughts or concerns out of fear of rejection, fear of conflict, fear of being ostracized or put outside of you know, the conversation. You're probably going out of your way to please people. You might fake your feelings or choose not to express them. Again, probably out of some fear. You might be someone who's seeking other people's validation rather than, than your own. So what I'm sharing with you are thoughts around when you know you're living outside of your authentic self, right? You might compare your life path to other people. 
You might be lying to yourself or others about the reality of a situation. You might be hiding your talents and gifts from other people because you aren't feeling confident enough or you feel vulnerable. You might struggle to fit in or keep up with your peers and you care more about what others think than what you truly want. So if you found yourself trapped by some of the above, it's time to say no more. It's time to say enough. We only get one shot at this crazy world called life, right? This crazy turn. So there are no do-overs or timeouts. So we can't waste our time trying to be anything other than who we were divinely created to be. And so I think that this is a, is a opportunity for all of us to take a stand for being able to really get clear about who we are, to embrace it, to accept it, so that we can understand more about our strengths and more about how we can contribute to the world around us. Because being your most authentic self may be you know, easier said than done, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And I get it. You know, The world expects a lot from us. It takes courage to be ourselves and not the version of you that, that you have somehow convinced yourself and and maybe others uh, about who you want to be. Being authentic means that you are being true to your quirky, beautiful personality, your strengths and your weaknesses, and your own set of values. Being your most authentic self is being aware of all of it and owning it. Authenticity is showing up as you and not just being okay with it, but to be unapologetically proud of it. So I feel I've given you a lot to think about today. And again, um, I just want to share that life is easier when you are being you, right? You will thrive more when you allow yourself to work in your strength zone. And I think that you will feel more empowered and, and, and really feel that you can connect more with your natural abilities. And that will bring more successful outcomes to you. So it's really, um, for me, such a gift to be able to do this with you every week and for me to be able to show up as my true self, because um, I do believe that one of my gifts is to teach, to coach, to inspire, and this gives me the ability to do so. And if just one of you found something really important out of this conversation this morning, something life-changing, then I'm fulfilling my purpose. So thank you for joining me. This is part one. Uh, next week, we're going to go in a little deeper and I'm going to share uh, some, some more personal stories around my journey to find my, my authentic self and also share with you ways to continue to develop your authenticity and uh, to help you grow more into being the fullest expression of you. So whatever you got out of it this morning, I'm going to encourage you to share your thoughts and comments on the Facebook page and let us know how you think and feel about this conversation. If you would like a free download of my chapter, just uh, let us know in the comments and we'll share the link for you to be able to download the chapter. And uh, that's a gift for being a part of this community. So thank you so much for being a part of Monday Morning Mojo. And if you find this to be inspiring, encouraging, thought-provoking, um, please share it with your friends. We'd love to see the page grow. We'd love to see more of you uh, connecting with us here. And um, I, I want to wish you a positive, powerful day and week. And I will see you back here next Monday for the second part of Will the Real You Please Stand Up?